Are you hearing me okay? Good. Right, nice. Before I share with us this morning, I just want to say how powerful Friday night's Bible study was. Wasn't here, but I joined you online. And for those of you who weren't here and you did not yet join online, I invite you to do so. If you do so, then this message would make much better sense to you. I want to talk about gratitude, but I want to talk about gratitude in suffering. Because it's great to have a testimony like Andrea's, where you feel great and where you feel wonderful because God has done something, quote unquote, amazing in your life. But when it is that you're actually going through processing, when your faith is being proven, sometimes it's difficult to say thank you. So we're going to spend some time looking at Job. The book of Job stands as a kind of anti-wisdom book. And why do I say anti-wisdom? You see, Job was in the time of the patriarchs. How do we know that? Because one of his friends is Eliphaz. You remember that? Eliphaz was the son of Esau. The son of whom? Isaac. So Job lived in the time of the patriarch. And in the time of the patriarch, People had certain wisdoms, things that they believed about God, things of what they believed about life and how life should happen. So now you understand when you read through Job 1 and it says a fire of God came from heaven and killed, that you understand in those times, those people understood that anything that happened to you was God. If it was good, it was God. If it was bad, it was God. There's something there that they understood that we certainly don't, even though that was a wrong thing, because James later on explains to us that God doesn't use evil to test anybody. Yeah? But what they understood then was the sovereignty of God. So much so that they went overboard and ascribed everything to him. In the book of Job, we see that Job wrestles with the difficult question of suffering. Along with the affirmation and the recognition that God is still just and God is still good. You see Job grappling as you read through Job with the idea of shall I accept good from the hands of God and not evil also? Because he knew and understood that God is a just God and God is a good God, yet he found himself in this place of suffering. The book of Job praises God's sovereignty, God's wisdom, but it declares God's glory. And you may be wondering why and how it is that I came to use such passage to talk about gratitude. That was not the passage that I had. We had Psalm, a Psalm passage. And somehow I wasn't feeling the Psalm passage. So I asked Amir to change it to Job. I regret changing it to Job. I regret changing it to Job because I look at Job's attitude in the midst of it and I realize that in the last few days that my attitude was not like Job's. I buckled. I did not rejoice. I did not use my tongue to give glory to God. I said some very, very, nasty and ungodly things out of my mouth. But you guys know I would level with you, right? 
the prologue or the introduction to Job is a submission to the divine will of God in the midst of suffering. And I'm giving you all of this background because you'll see where I'm going with this. Forget not all his benefits in the midst of suffering. When we look through the Bible, there is no other work, there is no other book that deals with the problem of human suffering in light of the justice and goodness of God. And it's something today that we struggle with in our theology. That is why we have so many weird doctrines trying to explain away the idea of suffering and a just God. Hence the prosperity gospel. That if you serve in God, everything has to be wonderful and, and peachy. It's a lie. And so you find that when believers come up against hardship that very often our disposition is to become despondent to despair and to forget God and his benefits and we do not respond like Job oh but Job we read Job 1 and we say, yes, that's Job, but oh, Job wasn't all too wonderful. Somewhere along the line, Job forgot. And Job flew in the face of God. And God had to remind him. God didn't come with condemnation. God came with the reminder. He said to Job, where were you? When I drew the boundaries of the water and forbade it to come further, creating ocean and land. Where were you when I flung the stars in the sky and just with my word hold it in place? And scientists call it gravity, but I call it the word of God. God reminded Job because so often as humans, we forget. I forgot two weeks ago. I don't want to tell you the things that I said because they can't be said, not even out of church. So you pray for me while I pray for myself. I mean well in Jesus' name. Job confronts his heartless accusers. And this is why you should listen to the Bible study. I'm going to jump up and down when I heard that nugget you know we've always read it and we've always heard it that we have an advocate an advocate who stands on our behalf an advocate when the accuser comes he says covered under the blood not guilty not because we haven't done it but because he already paid the price for us so he acquits us Job did say things for which he later had to repent if you go to Job 42. He said all kind of awful things to him, friends, when they accused him, like I said about two weeks ago. I'm preaching my heart to you this morning, right? But even though Job imagines God as having been angry with him why this is happening, Somewhere in the midst of this, somewhere where Job was able to find his bearing, somewhere where Job was able to remember what God said in the light before his dark moment came, Job believed that God is just and that God will provide a redeemer. Job chapter 16, 19 to 21. God does not rebuke Job as one suffering for his sins. 
But God used the suffering to humble Job. I say that again. Philippians chapter 2 says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being equal with God did not think it something to be latched onto, but he humbled himself even unto the death. Let this mind be in Christ. It should be the constant journey of every believer to be humbled under the hand of God. He is humbled before the Lord as one who was ill-advised in speech. Guys, I struggle with my mouth. Pray for me, please. My tongue light. Pray for me. My praise team would be praying for me. Only three of them. The rest of you would catch on. So I want to go to the passage. Now that I've given you the background of who this man Job is. The Bible tells us that he was a righteous and upright man. Job prayed right around the clock. Job even prayed just in case him do something that him don't remember that God will cover him. Job's desire was always to please God. I want to pause for a cause there. For those of us who think that God owes us a comfortable life because we serve him faithfully. For those of us who think that God owes us blessings just because we come to church every time the church door open and we do everything he says. That was Job. Yet Job found himself in a situation where everything seemed to be going wrong. And according to the wisdom and the theology of his time, it must have been sin that allowed it. If you read the book of Job, you could see that even in the midst of all of that which was happening, losing everything, a wife that is telling him to curse God. And before you run your mouth on Job's wife, understand that Job was not the only one who lost everything. She lost as well. And before you run your mouth on Job's wife, remember yourself. And remember how it is that you face circumstances in your life where you just want to turn back and throw in the towel. Then perhaps you would have a little bit more grace on the poor lady. Cause God and die, she said. At least she recognized that there was no life outside of God. So here comes Satan in chapter 1, and Satan says, I'm sure if you take everything away from Job, he will curse you. I'm talking to us this morning about gratitude in and through suffering. It's a, not a denial of what it is you're going through. In verse 16, after Job had received all of this bad news, verse 20 says that this is Job's response. I'm not going to go back up to verse 16. I'm just going to look at Job's response because you guys know Job's story better than I do. Perhaps even more saved. Verse 20 says, then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground. Job was not denying what was happening to him. So when I tell you about gratitude and suffering, I'm not talking about escapism. I'm not talking to you about denying your reality. 
I'm talking about standing in your reality, but also standing in that which should you know about who God is. Job arose. He tore his robe, shaved his head, and fell on the ground, mourning because he was hurting. But Job, in, back in those days, Job was from the Chaldees. Ur of the Chaldees. Eliphaz is there, the son of Esau. Paganism ruled in Job's time. And what they would do in times of mourning is that they would cut themselves and create tattoos on their body to mourn the dead. But Job's response was different. Job chose a godly route to mourn. Job was different than me. And I'm about to become raw and honest with you this morning. Because I find sometimes in church, we wear so many masks. And we lie to ourselves and we lie to others. There have been times that I've resorted to ungodly means to deal with my pain. Alcohol. Sex. Weed, pain is real. But what caused that response? What causes us to respond in the ways that don't bring glory to God? It is because in the moments we forget. In the moments we forget. We forget where all the blessings that we're now mourning came from in the first place. We forget who our source has been all this time. We forget who it is that has been keeping us all this time. We forget what he has done all this time. And just because we buck up on one liquor circumstance we charge it to him I've experienced it in my own life and I'm sure many of you have have you ever been doing things for people all along everything they say they ask you for you say yes, yes. and the one minute you say no you're the worst person <laughs> ah but we treat God like that Clap too. You just clap when it was you. Clap for, for God. Yeah. Because we treat him like that. All the time in blessing we. We come church, we have testimony. Thank you Jesus. We dance. The one time that things don't go the way we want it to go. We vex. The dance, stop. The shout, stop. The prayer me, uh, stop. The worship God, you're faithful, stop. Pure worship that greatly glorifies God comes out of our situations of suffering. Spurgeon says it this way. He says, Surely, it has not come to this among God's people. I'm going to start again. Surely, it has not come to this among God's people that he must do as we like. Or else we will not praise him. If he doesn't please us every day and give way to our whims and our fancies and, our, and gratify our desire, 
then we do not praise him. That has become the church today. And you have believers saying, well, him say, command me, declare and decree. Let me tell you something, believers. Your faith is not a whip that beats God into action. If your faith was a whip that beat God into action, then your faith will be God. Because God will be the servant of your faith. Your faith is what puts you before God to understand that though he slay me, yet will I praise you because I understand that on the other side of this is you and I. Faith causes us to see answers where there is none. Faith causes us to see possibilities even when we're suffering. So Job did not mourn like how his culture is used to mourning. Instead, this is what Job said. We're soon done. Don't worry. I'm not going to shout to you for more than five more minutes. He said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. What was Job doing here? Naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return. Job was understanding that all of the blessings that he has been enjoying all through before when him did ban up until now, all those things there is God that gave it to him anyway. He came with nothing into this world nothing into this world and amassed so much who could it be ah listen to this then if you came with nothing and you got all of this if at some point you end up with nothing then you're not in relationship with the same person who did give you all of that before eh immobility pause him get weaker, him get impotent, him stop being God, somebody kick him off him throne, him sleeping, him dead. So then why we behave like that? Yeah, me say we, because me they cut. Me say we. Me, and me show two other people inside here stay like me. Thanks, Auntie Millie. Right. Shanika, sister, don't worry. We're going to remember today the benefits so that we don't end up in a position later on, like Job, where God had to draw him up. Job said, I acknowledge that everything that I have is because of him. Naked I came, naked I will return. The Lord gave, the Lord did what? The Lord did what? Now, Bible study last night, Friday night, same difference. Because me watched it again last night on Facebook. I'm going to create one little video to post. But in Bible study Friday night, you guys were talking about the ministry of Jesus. You see, a lot of us say we believe and we're Christians, but a lot of us aren't. We don't know what we believe. A lot of us follow fashion. That's how we, we socialize. We socialize that on Sabbath, Saturday, or Sunday, we put on, we close, and we go to church. Many of us, we're not even concerned about what's happening. In, we're just ashamed to stop. Come. Because everybody going to know, say we backslide. Talk the truth and shame the devil. 
We shame to stop come. And last night, it dawned on me. My message, my pastor. Let me see what the message is. Because the reason why I take this, me tired. I've been working all 20 hours a day. So I can't remember out of my head everything. Plus my old. I just tried to look young, but I'm in my 40s, guys. Clap me, I look good, though. Yes, yes, yes. So I said to my pastor, what a powerful Bible study. And him act like same never know say that powerful. Eh? You understand? I say, yes, it was powerful. The idea as, of Jesus as advocate never licked me so hard as it did in Bible study. So I said it was a powerful Bible study. I said, the significance of knowing. Because you may say, but born poor, what benefits are you asking me to remember? The significance of knowing who Jesus is jumped out to me. What do we believe if we really don't know who and how Jesus is? If we don't know that Jesus is God, if we don't know that Jesus is man touched with the feeling of our infirmity, but if we also don't know that as our advocate, Every time we fall and buck our toe, we have one who is in heaven pleading our case. And because he is God, he can never lose a case. So we are always victorious. We are always winning, even when we cannot see it. He's never lost a battle. So what benefit am I asking you to remember when you don't have no money in your pocket, when rent's due and you can't seem to find your way to pay it, when you're sick in your body, when depression will lick you, what am I asking you to remember? I'm asking you to remember that there is one who sits and pleads on your behalf. So you are more than a conqueror. Job said, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What could have been a tragedy for Job was that he almost forgot. He almost forgot this when the friends started to speak in his ear. Job almost forgot it. When you find yourself in circumstances like that, don't listen to everybody who has something to say. Andrea, go back to this like Andrea ha has been doing. Go back to the word. Hear what God says about you. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. And don't read it in King James because King James add on something. NIV says, NASB says, There is therefore now no condemnation. Full stop. The who walk not after that, that not they know in the Bible. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So even when you fall, you stand victoriously. Stand. But wish me to remember the word of God couple last week. Because Sister Margaret may did dip up under somebody. 
But I thank God my advocate is on the throne. That's why I could stand before you this morning. I don't stand before you perfect. I stand before you real. I stand before you uncondemned. I stand before you victorious. I stand before you as one who has a God who has never lost a battle and he will never lose. Therefore, as Romans chapter 8 tells us, and I'll close with this verse, and this is my encouragement to you, even as you go through suffering, don't forget. Don't forget. Because when you remember, you're able to worship and give thanks like Job. You're able to be grateful like Job. So this is where I would end with you this morning. Praise team, please to get your place. Romans chapter 8. Verses 31 and 37. You could read all the other things between that. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Verse 37. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. In actuality, what the original language says is not that we are more than conquerors. The original language says, in all these things, we have overwhelmingly conquered. It's already done. God bless you.